Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a comparison between two brushless motors where both of them have the same physical can size, the same power output, but yet two totally different KV values. One may say, how does the motor that has the higher KV value not have a higher output power? This is what we're going to be specifically looking into in this video. Understanding why this is, how did it come about, and what are the manufacturers doing in order to actually rate these motors the way that they rate the motors. Now when we talk about KV, we know from previous videos that this is one very critical component when we're selecting our brushless motors. Typically what we'll do in any application is we'll look at the specific vehicle type, we'll assign a voltage that we wish to run to that motor, whether it be a plane or car, then from there we go and select the brushless motor KV value that we want to use within that application. So we know KV is quite important to us in motor select selection and optimization. Let's now take a look at what is the biggest limitation of power in our brushless motors. Well, we also know from previous videos that the biggest limitation in terms of our brushless motor is going to be heat. Heat actually affects every single electrical component, even if you're talking about your TV. Heat is the biggest killer of all electrical components. It is very easy to predict failure if you know things are getting too hot. That is not a good sign. It's the exact same with our brushless motors. We want to keep them as cool as possible. So when we're talking about motors that have very specific ratings, the motor manufacturers are rating them based off of heat. Motors can only expel or get rid of a certain amount of heat. If you push that motor too hard, it's going to push that load. However, if you're past their thermal threshold, that's when we get into trouble. Now let's take a look at a, an example. We're going to be using the same numbers all the way through this entire video. Our brushless motor comparison is going to be a 1750 watt motor. We're going to have, of course, two of them that we're going to be comparing up against. Now, typically brushless motors operate at an efficiency between 80 to 90 percent. Yes, there are brushless motors that can exceed this or might be below this. It, of course, depends on the quality of the brushless motor. Uh, we're going to look specifically at a motor that has a rating of 90% efficiency. Now it's very easy if we have a 90% efficient motor because we know the remaining 10% is going to be contributing to all of that waste heat. Now for anyone who's actually held a light bulb in their hand, one of the old school incandescents that operates at 100 watts, you are holding about 90 to 95 watts watts of heat in your hand and I guarantee you that you probably weren't holding that for all that long until you let go and it smashed on the ground. That is a lot of heat that you're holding in your hand. Now imagine having a 10% inefficient motor producing, going back to our 1750 watt motor, about 175 watts, just knocking that zero, simple math, 175 watts of waste heat that that motor has to get rid of. Now that, that's quite critical because keep in mind 90% efficient in terms of our brushless motors in the hobby world, that's very good. You know, there's a lot of brushless motors in the hobby world that does that, but that is still very good. 90% efficiency is incredible. So when we take that 175 watts, that brushless motor has to be able to get rid of that 175 watts. It has to be able to dissipate that and emit it all to the atmosphere so that air or whatever is around it can actually take it away and remove it from the motor. If it's not able to do that and operate in steady state, State, that motor is going to continue to heat up because it's not able to dissipate that until something fails. So when motor manufacturers are actually specifying the output wattage of the motor, they are really considering the waste heat. That is what it really revolves around. If the motor can't dissipate it, it can't operate that at that power continuously. Now when we look at dissipation of heat, it really comes down to the surface area of that brushless motor. If that brushless motor has a larger diameter and it has a longer case length, it is gonna have more surface area. The more surface area that we have, whether it's an inrunner or outrunner, gives the ability of dissipating more heat to the atmosphere. That is what is very good about brushless motors. The larger they get, the better they are at getting rid of that heat. And that's why you will typically see, as the brushless motor increases in size, it has a higher potential of 
delivering more power output for you. Because remember, overall power output is always going to be two components. It's going to be your power to the motor shaft and power to waste heat. And here, bigger motors dissipate more heat. It's that simple. So now let's talk about how this heat, where does it actually come from? And again, in another previous video, we talked about current. Current ultimately is where heat comes from. Anytime you have current traveling through a wire, that is producing heat. That's where we get all of that heat from. So as we go ahead and operate our brushless motors, they're operating at certain currents and that current multiplied by itself multiplied by the resistance gives you the power output now i do have to warn you later in the video we are going to get a little bit mathy we're going to talk a little bit about numbers and multiplying numbers together however i do promise that it won't get too complicated i feel like we should do this just so we can prove out and show where all of these items are coming from now i do want to talk about our example going back to our 1750 watt motor i want to put the numbers up on the on the screen here and i'm going to read from my notes now the 1750 watt brushless motor the one motor is going to have a 2600 kv and the other one has a 580 kv so very very different you know it's almost a difference of five right there the voltage that we're going to run on the 2600 kv motor is going to be 11.1 volts and the voltage of the other motor operating at a much lower kv is 44.4 volts now when we look at the current the current of both motors the one is going to be operating at 150 amps and the other is going to be operating at 40 amps then we have the rm this is the internal resistance of the motor and then we have lastly the io this is what we talked about in the very last video this is the current at no load now the reason why this is important is we of course know the voltage multiplied by our current is going to give us that continuous wattage power. That's where these voltage and current numbers come from. The next components, the RM and IO are also very critical. So we're going to talk about, we're going to get into the waste heat parameters produced by the brushless motors. We're going to focus in on a couple of these parameters and identify exactly what they mean and how they apply. So the biggest thing that we are going to be focusing in on is the RM. So if you look at brushless motor number one, that is the brushless motor on the top, the 2600 kV rated motor, that has an internal resistance of 0.0047 ohms. So that is quite low. Now if we look at the other motor that has a kV of 580, that has an internal resistance of 0.0831 ohms. So that is significantly higher. When we look at the current, the no load, our higher KV motor actually has a significantly higher no load current at 5.83 versus 0.92. Now the reason why I put these on here is because they do tell us a little bit about what's happening with these motors. Earlier in the video, we talked about heat being produced by current multiplied by itself so this current squared multiplied by the resistance when we take the current of 158 amps and multiply it by cell by itself 158 amps and then multiply it by the resistance that is what is the waste heat that's the production of waste heat now it's incredible because 158 amps is very high you know that's a very very significant um, current that we're pushing through this motor. But here's the catch. Look at the other motor where we have a 0.0831 resistance. That is a significant multiple of the motor with a 2600 kV. Because it's so high, even though we're only operating this motor at 40 amps, we're gonna get a significant waste heat value. So the motor with a higher kV is actually going to be able to produce a comparable amount of waste heat in terms of the output on the RM side, on the resistance side. The biggest point to take from this is that the motor that has the lower KV at 580 only has, you know, 40 amps of power going through it, but the internal resistance of the motor is actually so high. This is what allows it to go and operate at a very high voltage, but yet a very low current. At the same time, it produces significant amount of waste heat. In order to get that motor to operate at a high voltage, they have to have more windings going around the motor pole. In order to do that, you have the more windings, but then you have more wire at a 
wire gauge that is going to be a little bit smaller, this produces a more significant internal resistance. So it's not ideal, but it is ideal for the motor that is going to operate at a very high voltage and low current. So let's quickly run through the efficiencies of the motor and see what that produces. This is where we're going to get a little bit mathy. So I'm going to keep my notes here just to kind of pump out the numbers that make sense. I can't calculate these things in my head, but I'll go through it as we are looking at the numbers. Now, two things that I have to explain very quickly here, that when we're looking at the internal resistance of the motor, this is going to be referred to as a copper losses within our motor. It's the losses that we see when we power this brushless motor have current going through the windings. There is heat that is lost. This is known as the copper losses. At the same side of things, we have also what is known as iron losses within the motor. This is also what we talked about in the previous video, where we have losses that are contributed due to the core of the, the iron core of the brushless motor. So in order to calculate our copper losses, what we have to do is we have to take our resistance and multiply that by the current squared that we plan to run through that motor. So we go ahead and do that. This is the results that we get. Now at the same time, to calculate our iron losses, what we have to do is take our IO current, so this is the, the no load current, and multiply that by the voltage we plan to run. So when we do that, we get the following output. So you can see if we add up both of these numbers in our chart, we get a total loss for motor one at 182 watts, and we get a total loss of motor two at 174 watts. So these two losses are very comparable. And remember how we said the motor's gonna be running 90% efficiency, which means we get about 10% of power due to waste heat. That goes directly into the waste heat. This actually matches that quite well. You know, your numbers are never going to be perfect. And if you tried to do this on your own motor, you're probably going to get some very significant results. Uh, usually they'll be lower because you're basing it all off of a perfect scenario. So the point to take away from this is that if we take our brushless motors and we want to push them a little bit harder, we know that we're going to end up with more waste heat, especially from our copper losses again. That higher current is going to be multiplied through and it's going to increase the amount of waste heat, in which case the brushless motor is not going to be able to dissipate. It falls outside of what it's rated for. The only way that we're able to make this work is by changing the way we cool the motor. So if we introduce water cooling, we can actually increase that output of the motor. We can increase that output so that we can get rid of that waste heat, keep the motor cool, and it'll operate even though it's operating higher than our continuous rated current. This is why brushless motor manufacturers hesitate to put this kind of data out there for the public to read. Because depending on your application, it can change the actual amount of power that you receive out of that motor. If you cool the motor very well, you'll have the potential to increase the amount of power output significantly. You know, you might get 5%, 10% more power out of that motor if you can cool it really well with something like water cooling for a radio controlled electric boat. However, if you're stuck where you have it in an airplane and it's behind a cowl that receives no airflow, then you're gonna have the opposite happen to you. It's not even gonna hit its continuous power output as rated by the manufacturer and then it's gonna to get too hot and possibly burn out. So you can see why motor manufacturers hesitate to actually put these numbers up on the screen for you to see. It's because of this exact thing. Now I hope you were able to get something out of that looking at the comparison between brushless motors that have the same physical size, the same power outputs, but yet two totally different KVs. Now next week, we're gonna be making a, a similar comparison. However, we're gonna compare brushless motors up against ICE engines, ICE engines, internal combustion engines. Can we or can we not draw parallels between an ICE engine versus our brushless motors? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you're able to come here and see that video next week. Thank you for watching.